Hey everyone, in this video, I won't be covering simple and basic questions like what is Spring Boot or what's the difference between Spring and Spring Boot. Instead, I'll be focusing on real, challenging and tricky questions. So let's get started. How would you handle inter-service communication in a microservice architecture using Spring Boot? So basically, for simple direct communication, I would use REST template which allows services to send requests and receive responses like a two-way conversation. For more complex interactions, especially when dealing with multiple services, I would choose Fin Client. Basically, it simplifies declaring and making the code cleaner and the process would be more efficient. For asynchronous communication, where immediate responses are not necessary, I would use message brokers like RabbitMQ or Kafka. These act like community boards where services can post messages that other services can read and act upon later. This approach ensures a robust, flexible communication system between microservices. Now let's move to the different question. Can you explain the caching mechanism available in Spring Boot? So basically caching is like having a memory box where we can store things we use frequently so we don't have to go through the whole process of getting them each time. It makes our application faster and more efficient. There is a Spring Cache abstraction in Spring Boot and it is like a smart memory layer for our operation. It is designed to save time and resources by remembering the results of expensive operations like fetching data from a database. When we ask from the same data again, Spring Cache gives it to us quickly from its memory instead of doing the whole operation again. Now let's move to the different question. How would you implement caching in a Spring Boot application? So in order to implement caching in a Spring Boot application, first add a caching dependencies like Spring Boot starter cache. Okay. Then I'll enable caching in the application by adding enable caching annotation to the main class. Okay. Then I'll define cacheable operation using cacheable notation on methods whose result we want to cache. Okay. And uh, optionally, I will customize cache behavior with annotations like cache evict and cache put. Then I'll choose a cache provider like EH cache or Hazelcast, or I'll use the default co concurrent map based cache provided by the Spring. So, this is how I would implement caching in a Spring Boot application. Now, let's move to the different question. Your Spring Boot application is experiencing performance issues under high load. What are the steps you would take to identify and address the performance? So first, I would identify the specific performance issues using monitoring tools like Spring Boot Actuator or Splunk. Then I would also analyze application logs and metrics to spot any patterns or errors, especially under high load. Then I would start a performance test to replicate the issue and use a profiler for code level analysis. Okay. Then after getting findings, I might optimize the database implement caching or use scaling option it's also crucial to continuously monitor the application to prevent further issues now let's move to the different question what are the best practices for versioning rest apis in a spring boot application so for versioning rest apis in a spring boot best practices include first is url versioning it includes the version number in the url like api slash v1 slash products okay the second is header versioning. It uses a customer header to specify the version. Third one is media type versioning. Uh, this version go through the content negotiation using the ex accept header. Okay. Fourth is parameter versioning. It basically specify the version as a request parameter. Now let's move to the different question. How does Spring Boot simplify the data access layer implementation? Basically, Spring Boot uh, makes the implementation of data access layer easy by offering several streamlined features. First, it auto configures essential settings like data source and GPA based on the libraries present in the class path and will reduce the manual setup. It also provides built in repository support such as JPA repository, enabling easy CRUD operations without the need for boilerplate code. Additionally, Spring Boot can automatically initialize database schemas and will seed the data using script. It also integrates smoothly with various databases and ORM technologies and translate SQL exception into Spring's data access exceptions and providing a consistent and simplified error handling mechanism. These features collectively make data access layer development more efficient and developer friendly. Now let's move to the different question. What are conditional annotations and explain the purpose of conditional annotations in Spring Boot. So basically conditional annotations in Spring Boot help us create beans or configurations only if certain conditions are met. 
it's like setting rules if this condition is true then do this a common example is conditional on class annotation which creates a bean only if a specific class is present this makes our application flexible and adaptable to different environments without changing the code and it will enhance the modularity and efficiency as well now let's move to the different question explain the role of enable auto configuration annotation in a spring boot application and how does spring boot achieve auto configuration internally enable auto configuration annotation in spring boot tells the framework to automatically set up the application based on its dependencies internally spring boot uses conditional evaluation that will examine the class path existing beans and properties it depends on conditional annotation in its auto configuration classes to determine what to configure this smart setup makes the configuration to our needs it will simplifying and speeding up the development process now let's move to the different question what are spring boot actuator endpoints spring boot actuator is like a toolbox for monitoring and managing our spring boot application it gives us endpoints where we can check health view configuration gather metrics and much more it's super useful for keeping an eye on how our app is doing in a production environment which is like the real world where our app is being used by people these endpoints can reveal sensitive information about our application imagine leaving our diary open in public place we wouldn't want that right similarly we don't want just anyone seeing into the internals of our application now let's move to the different question how can we secure the actuator endpoints so basically there are few ways to secure the actuator endpoints first one is limit exposure by default not all actuator actuator endpoints are exposed we can control which ones are available over the web it's like choosing what parts of our diary are okay to share okay second is using spring security we can configure spring security to require authentication for accessing actuator endpoints we should use https instead of http since https is having more security fourth one is actuator role we should create a specific role like actuator admin and assign it to users who should have access this is like giving a key to only trusted people now let's move to the different question what strategies would you use to optimize the performance of a spring boot application let's say my spring boot application is taking too long to respond to user request i could implement caching for frequently accessed data optimize database queries to reduce the load on the database use asynchronous method for operations like sending emails load balancer if traffic is high optimize the time complexity of the code use webflux to handle a large number of concurrent connections now let's move to the different question how can we handle multiple beans of the same type to handle multiple beans of the same type in spring we can use qualifier annotation this lets us specify which beans to inject when there are multiple candidates for example if there are two beans of the type data source we can give each a name and use qualifier to tell spring which one to use another way is to use primary annotation on one of the beans marking it as a default choice when injecting that type now let's move to the different question what are some best practices for managing transaction in spring boot application so first we should use transaction annotation so basically transaction annotation is one of the annotations in spring boot that we put on method or classes it tells spring boot hey please handle this as a single transaction then put transaction annotation on service methods where we perform the database operations if anything goes wrong with this method spring boot will automatically roll back the changes to avoid partial updates okay second one is to keep transaction at the service layer basically it's usually best to handle transaction in the service layer of our application the service layer is where we put business logic it's a sweet spot where we can access different parts of our application like data access and business logic while keeping things organized now let's move to the different question how do you approach testing in spring boot application testing in spring boot applications is like making sure everything is our newly built rocket works perfectly before launching it into a space we want to be sure each part does its job correctly in spring boot we have some great tools for this including spring boot test and mock main annotation uh, let's first uh, uh, see the testing approach first one is unit testing this is like checking each part of a rocket individually like the engine the fuel tank etc we test small pieces of code usually methods in isolation second approach is integration testing now we are checking how different parts of a rocket work together in a spring boot this means testing how different components interact with each other 
and with the spring context now let's move to the different question discuss the use of spring boot test and mock bean annotations so first let's understand the spring boot test annotation spring boot test is an annotation used for integration testing in spring boot it says start up the spring context when this test runs use spring boot test annotation when we need to test how different parts of our application work together it's a great way for when we need the full behavior of our application now let's understand the mock bean annotation mock bin is used to create a mock version of a component or service this is useful when we want to test a part of our application without actually involving its dependencies use mock bin in test where we need to isolate the component being tested for example if we are testing a service that depends on a repository we can mock the repository to control how it behaves and test the service in isolation now let's move to the different question what advantages does yaml offers over properties file in spring boot are there limitations when using yaml for configuration so basically yaml offers several advantages over properties file in spring boot it supports hierarchical configuration which are more readable and easier to manage especially for complex structures yaml also allows comments heading documentation however yaml has limitations too it's more error prone due to its sensitivity to spaces and indentations Additionally, YAML is less familiar to some developers compared to straightforward key value format pair of properties file. While YAML is a great for complex configurations and readability, these limitations are important to consider when choosing the format for Spring Boot application. Now let's move to the different question. Explain how Spring Boot profile works. Spring Boot profiles are like having different settings for our application depending on the situation. It's like having different playlists on our music app, one for working out, one for relaxing and so on. Each playlist sets a different mood just like each profile in Spring Boot sets up a different environment for our application. Profile in Spring Boot allows us to separate parts of our application configurations and make it available only in certain environments. For example, we might have one set of settings for development, another for testing and yet another for production. So let's understand why should we use profiles. Using profiles helps keep our application flexible and maintainable. We can easily switch environments without changing our code. It's like having different mode for different purposes, making sure our application always behaves appropriately for its current environment. Now let's move to the different question. What is aspect oriented programming in the spring framework? Basically aspect oriented programming is a programming approach that helps in separating concerns in our program, especially those that cuts across multiple parts of an application. A main program code focuses on the core functionality while the aspects take care of the other common tasks that needs to happen in various places like logging security checks or managing transactions for example in java application we might have methods where we want to log information every time they are called or checked that a user has the right permission instead of putting this logging or security code into every method we can define it once in an aspect and then specify where and when this code should applied across our application this keeps our main code cleaner and more focus on its primary task. Let's move to the different question. What is Spring Cloud and how it is useful for building microservices? Spring Cloud is one of the components of the Spring framework. It helps managing microservices. Imagine we are running an online store application like a virtual mall where different sections handle different tasks. In this application, each store or section is a microservice. One section handles customer login, another manages the shopping cart. One take care of processing payments and other list all the products. Building and managing such an app can be complex because we need all these sections to work together seamlessly. Customers should be able to log in, add items to the card, pay for them and browse products without any problem. That's where Spring Cloud comes into the picture. It helps microservices in connecting this section, balancing the crowd keeping the secret safe etc etc now let's move to the different question how does spring boot make the decision on which server to use a spring boot decides which server to use based on the class part dependencies if a specific server dependency like tomcat jetty or undertow is present spring boot auto configures it as a default server if no server dependency is found spring boot defaults to tomcat as it's included in spring boot starter web this automatic server selection simplifies setup and configuration allowing us to focus more on developing the application rather than configuring ser server details